the hoods to explain how we can wrap YouTube or any one of these. Kids? Um, Okay, great. Um, I'm going to have blue. I'm going to plug in a number for X. What? This is too crowded. Let me get a little less crowded. Alright, X plus 7. Okay, so. 3? 3? This is going to be a big one. Y, 15 plus 7. Equals 22. Okay. Now how would I put that in the graph? Another point? One point's not enough? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one point's not enough. So, so uh, how will you find a point? I would, I don't know, I think we could do like one. Put one in there? Yeah, for the X. Same exact process with a different number. Interesting. So 5 plus 7, and that is 12. Okay, so this gave us 3, 22. And here we get 1. That's enough? Maybe mm -hmm. more? Um, maybe, one. maybe one more. Okay, what well, one more should we find? Um, negative. negative one. Okay, negative one. Y equals five times negative one, seven. Negative five plus seven, that is two. So negative one, two. Pretty much figure it out. What, what do you mean by that? There's a line there? Okay, and so that's a big question. Is it a line? Like if I kept plotting it on point after point after point, plug in zero, plug in negative three, plug in uh, 1.2, plug in negative 1.7653. If I keep plotting all these points, will they keep landing on a line? Or will some kind of a curve come out of this? A line. What we're going to do today is figure out exactly why that's a line, okay? But for now, it certainly looks like a line. So what we're going to do today, again, to say it in a different way, is to show exactly why it must be a line, okay? Something about this function, the way that it works, the pattern that it, it uh, produces, it must be a line. But it certainly looks like a line, so uh, rather than plot this point and this point and this point and this one and all these in here and that one and all these ones after there, we can just draw this line. But when we draw this line, we don't forget that, what, that drawing that line is actually doing what? Plotting an infinite number of points that we don't have time to plot. We've got busy lives from important people. We just draw a line and say that's what all the points will look like. Okay? Any questions? So far, so good. Okay, you show me. Get out your note, no, get out a piece of paper, excuse me, and uh, pencil, put everything away, so go on. Okay, so we need to find some points, right?
right? We can kind of keep this a little bit organized this way if I put the line in the right place. Uh, what's an X that you uh, plugged in? Yeah? One. A one, like that. Uh, negative two times one plus one. That's negative two plus one. That's negative one. One, negative one. <coughs> what else? Charlie? Negative three. Negative three. Negative two times negative three plus one. That's six plus one. That's seven. Negative three, seven. Okay. John? Negative two. Negative two, negative two times negative two. Four plus one, five. How many times should we do this? What's that? You only have to do it twice if you have like the two separate points. Like you have the negative negative two times negative the negative three as x, then like the three and then positive three. Uh -huh. And you can have two points separate from each other on the graph, but I do more in case it has a curve in it. Okay. What if we were guaranteed that it wasn't a curve? How many points would we need? Just two, just need two. Okay, and so we have these two, here's a third one, and it certainly seems like it would be on the same line that's between the first two that we drew. So we'll just go ahead and connect, and then we're gonna talk about how can we be so sure that this equation here is gonna make a line as opposed to a curve. Okay. Looking for some kind of a pattern, some kind of something predictable that would tell us that this equation is going to lay down points in such a way that it'll make a line. Anybody feel like they put that into words and tell us why they, like we've done at least four, that's like the fourth one, we did three on the homework, we just did another one. They've all been lines. Okay. If they weren't lines in your homework, maybe you made a little math mistake or something, they were supposed to be lines. So they're all lines and how can I tell just by looking at this thing that it's going to be a line? Sean? Uh, because when you multiply, it's going up as a, at a constant rate, like and you're adding rate, one yeah. at a constant rate with it. So not not adding one on one of the problems. So, so they all have this plus one on it. Yeah. And uh, there's this, like, pattern, like the, if I plug in one, then I, I'm going to subtract yeah. two. If I plug in two, I'm going to subtract four. If I plug in three, I'm going to subtract six from one. If I plug in four, I'm going to subtract what? If I plug in four, this is going to be what? Eight. Negative eight, I'm going to subtract eight from one. What's the pattern there in those numbers that I just rattled off? You're subtracting two more than the number you multiply by. Let's, uh, let's look at what is negative two x plus one. Y equals negative two x plus one. Remember the stories we wrote? Yes. Okay, let's make up a quick story for this one. What could this one be, Kate? Um, yeah. um, okay. Do you want a rate? Sean? A uh, story with a rate? Bob withdraws $2 from his bank account every week. Good, that's a rate. Two dollars a week, withdrawing from his bank account. And then add one, add, adds one. And then one time he puts a dollar back yeah. in there. So, he's gonna be in debt in a hurry. But he withdraws two dollars per week. Here is the number of what? Week. Weeks. Plus a dollar, for some reason he throws a dollar in there. Okay, good enough. Um, so let's look at a pattern. What's helpful to see a pattern is to do something like just the same, so kind of drift, so just start with a pattern. So we'll start with a pattern of like, uh, sort of negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, look at all those x's being plugged in and see what kind of y's we get out, okay? So this is negative two times negative three plus one, that's six plus one, that's seven, okay? I should see more notes out here. Uh, yeah. 
So negative 2 times negative 2 plus 1, that's 4 plus 1, that's 5. Negative 2 times negative 1 plus 1, that's a positive 2 plus 1, that's 3. Negative 2 times 0 plus 1, that's just a 1, because that's 0. Negative 2 times 1 plus 1, that's negative 2 plus 1, that's negative 1. Now, I've done this five times. Okay. Every time I go up how much on the x? Oh, one. Go up one. 1, up 1, up 1, up 1, up 1. How about what the y is? What's the y doing? Two. I'm going down 2. Going down 2. Are we surprised that it's going down 2? No. Where do we see down 2 in the equation? It's down 2. Every time the next x comes along, what happens? Well, we just have some multiple of a 2, of a, of a negative 2, right? The bigger the x, the bigger the multiple of negative 2, right? Yeah, bigger and smaller is kind of true. We're talking about negative numbers. But I think you see what I'm saying. Like the larger in magnitude this number is, it's going down, 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 down. And it's going this really predictable way. Like every time I plug in the next x, I get the next multiple of 2. I go to the next x, I get the next multiple of 2. The next x, I get the next multiple of 2. Right? So we get this steady predictable pattern of x goes up 1 and y goes down 2. We can see it in the table. We've seen it on the graphs. Okay. Let's look at it on the graph. I can just start at uh, this point here, negative 3, 7. Let's just pick that. Negative 3, 7. And there we go. Now I know if I move over to the next x, I'm just going to be 2 lower than I was on the previous point. Right? I move over 1 on the x, and I move down 2 in the y direction. There we go. Let's see if that matches up. Negative 2, uh, that wasn't 2 in the y direction. That was just kind of thinking it. Down 1. Let's see if that matches up with what we did. Negative 2, 5. Yeah, maybe it just, it just matches right up. Okay. And since I know that if I move over 1 in the, y, in the x direction, I'll move down 2 in the y direction, this is kind of like going down a set of stairs. Right? I take a step, I go down the same amount. I take a step, I go down the same amount. Right? And you know what we can draw across the top of all those stairs? Is a line. Like if that staircase wasn't so stair like, it would just be like a ramp. Right? Yeah. Like a, 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 a ramp is like stairs. They're like tiny, 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 tiny stairs. So there we go. We, since we can see that uh, all these points are going to follow the same pattern, I can tell you where all the points are going to be. They're going to be on this line. I don't really like to say on this line. They're going to be the line, right? Because all points are going to make the line. They're not really on the line. They are a part of the line. And these three parts are just three parts that we can see more because we kind of drew them real big as points. But this is a point as well. It's just drawn really tiny. If it was drawn really accurately, you wouldn't even be able to see it because a point is just super duper small. But it's neither here nor there. Um, so can I be sure that, if given a certain kind of equation, that it's just going to make a line shape when I graph it? No. Yes or no? Yeah? I say no, because some equations might have, I mean, making the different types of uh, signs, like addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. Makes each line different. So, you know how at the beginning of the year we were doing the weird point lines and it went up and then came yep. back down. So. so, not all graphs are lines. Yeah. But certain kinds of equations, apparently yeah. certain types, do make lines. Yeah. So, somehow there's got to be a way to look at the equation and be like, that's going to make a line. I can be sure. Okay. Can you tell me what an equation would look like that you can just be sure that's going to make a line? Kids? Well,.
multiplication, what you're saying about that, and then just something added on. Okay. Uh, that sounds good. Sean, what do you think? Can I tell by looking at the equation that it's going to be a line when I graph it? Uh, you could have subtraction too. Okay, addition of negative numbers, right? Yeah. Subtraction. Okay. Well, anything that can be, it, the story sounds like this. So and so did something every whatever. You see what I'm saying? Like a rate, okay. like got $5 an hour, went 45 miles per second, uh, lost 20 pounds a month, whatever. Like there is this steady rate, this steady increase, this steady decrease. Okay, very predictable. Right? If I were to graph uh, me driving at 45 miles an hour, one hour goes by, 45 more miles. Another hour goes by, 45 more miles. Another hour goes by, 45 more miles. Right? Really predictable, really linear. A steady line is what that graph looks like. So anything that has a rate like this times x, and this is important, you may not realize it, but to the first power, you don't need those those curvy graphs curvy? Exponents. Yeah, x squared, x to the third. Okay. This doesn't have that. This is very predictable. This goes up. Like when I plug <coughs> when I plug in a number for x, nothing happens to the x. It just gets multiplied by that, that negative two. Right? So it x changes as I change the input for x. When I multiply by negative two, like nothing's happened to it before I multiply by negative two. It's just a steady rate. So anytime I have a rate like negative two, two dollars per week, somebody, I don't know what his name was uh, in the story, uh, he withdrew two dollars a week, uh, this is the number of weeks, and in, in, in deposited a dollar at some point. Anything that has a story like that is a linear story. It's a linear equation. It's a linear graph. It's a graph that is a line. Okay? So to be algebra-y about it, anything that looks like this, is going to have a line graph, okay? You should write that down. Y equals mx plus b. Have you guys heard y equals mx plus b before? Fantastic. I'm glad none of you have heard because, well, you just get to learn it for the first time here. Okay, so anything that looks like that, we can, we can think of as, oh, somebody drove at 45 miles per hour, uh, for X hours, and they started out, you know, 10 miles down the road already. They were already 10 miles headed in the right direction. Or whatever. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's graph some more, but we're going to be real strategic about it. We're going to find how many points? Two. Two. That's the. That's the least number that I can use to draw a thing that I know is going to be a line. If it's going to be a curve, I need more points. But if it's going to be a line, I just need two. Any other points that I find are just going to be part of the same line. And it's going to be kind of a more time that I need to put into it. So let's say we take this example of 3x plus 5. Okay. First thing I know is that I only need two points. All right. So then we should find the easiest points. What's an easy point? It's one that's easy to find when you plug in a number for x. I want you to think, what's the easiest number you could plug in for x in this equation, Grady? Zero. Right for zero. Sometimes people, well, oftentimes somebody will say one. The one is easy, right? But what's even easier to multiply by than one? Zero. Zero. It's even easier to multiply by zero. Because anything times zero is zero. Three times zero is zero plus five is? Five. When I go to graph this point, where is it going to be? Sean? It's going to stay directly in the center because it's on the x not line. Not that way. Not that way. Zero for x. And it'll go five, not too up. It's right there. It's right on this. Can we extrapolate out to any equation like this? 
any equation we plug zero in for x, right? If we plug zero in for x, it's not gonna be over here, it's not gonna be over there, it's gonna be right in the middle. It's gonna be right on this thing here. What is this thing called? Y the y-axis, right? The y-axis. We're gonna draw a line in a second, right? It's gonna go through this point right here. This is the very point where it goes through the y-axis. That's why we call this the y-intercept. That's where the line intercepts the y-axis. Alex? Uh, you put it on a four, on the four. Um, there we go, five, thank you. I bet that's what all those hands were raised for. So that's the y-intercept. That's what it's called. Anytime you plug in zero for x, it's gonna be on the y-axis. x is zero. Okay, now for this equation, Zero is the winner for the easiest thing I can plug in for x. What's the next easiest thing I can plug in for x, Johnny? One. One, I would agree, is the easiest thing I can plug in for x. Uh, one comma, well that's three times one is three times plus five is eight. Okay, uh, one, so eight. Notice, I went over to one, and how many, how many more did I go up? Three. 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 Yeah, surprising? No. No, three over there, right? Yes? Did we add 5 to x? You only added 1 to x. Here, let's talk about this, because what I wanted to show you here is 5 doesn't really have anything to do with the pattern that we're seeing, right? Let's try y equals 3x minus 2. Well, what's the easiest number we can plug in for x? Zero. Zero. What will we get when we do that? Mm -hmm. Look at that. I mean, isn't that just, can we look at the equation and just say, there it is. You plug in 0, you're going to get negative 2. Okay, so it would be down here. Next, I would plug in a one. If I if I move the x over one, over one, right? Then how many more will I put on the y? Uh, three. Three. It's like three miles per hour, right? One hour goes by, three more miles. One hour goes by, three more miles. One hour goes by, three more miles, and in perpetuity. Forever and ever. One, two, wait, one, two, three. Right? We can test it out. One uh, times three is three minus two is one. There it is, one, one. Which is just over one and up three from where we just were. And we've already established it's going to be a line, right? I'll just draw all the other points, all of them, create a line, not a curve. Here's this one. drawn it better. What could you say about these two lines? What should you be able to, not based on my drawing? Yeah? They're true. Yeah. Well, not true, but... All the points make, the points from this one make the equation true, the points from that one make the equation true, that equation, that's important. Not quite really like it. You just compare the pictures of the lines. Yes, they don't look that way when I drew them, but they should be parallel, right? Yeah. Why should they be the same? Why should they or should, why should they be parallel? Why should they never cross? Why should they always just go just right next to each other? Always like that, Monica? Okay.
Okay, they're not curved, they're both straight. The straight lines can cross each other, right? So it's not because they're curved, or not, not because they're not curved, because if, if they were like this, they would cross back here, cross back here. What is it that's causing these two straight lines to be parallel, to never cross each other? Ready? They're constant rate. The constant rate, they have the same constant rate. What constant rate do they have? Three. Three to one, right? X moves one, Y moves three, X moves one, Y moves three, X moves one, Y moves three. If they both are doing that same thing, it's like two stairs that are like right on top of each other, right? They're never gonna cross each other. They're just gonna keep going and going and going. So that's one cool thing, that and that tell me that if I graph the lines, they'll be parallel. Okay? They have the same constant rate. Same constant rate. This rate sometimes, actually oftentimes, is called the slope. And the rate here is also referred to as the slope. I like the word rate. Incoming students to college, one of their biggest problems in mathematics is they do not understand that the slope is the same as the rate. They don't see slope as rate, they just see it as like, oh, this line is slanting. It, it means something, okay? They don't see this equation as a story. They don't understand that the slope is a rate of change. Okay? It's the rate of change of the, whatever y represents to whatever x represents. Y is changing as x is changing. Okay? All right. Now, here's a weird one. Now we've got a fraction. A story can go along with that. Let's think about a story. Let's make up a story for this equation. Now let someone other than Sean give us a story. Sean's getting lots of practice with storytelling. Somebody else can get some practice. Cadence, you think you got a story? Zero in for x, you got your two. You got a point right away. If he works for no minutes, he has two pennies. Okay? Now I could go over one, right? And then add three fifths of a penny to that. And so that would put me here's a three fifths put me right about there. And I'm trying to guess where these points would be. Okay? But since we're about to run out of time, if I move over five minutes, Instead of just one, one, two, three, four, five minutes, then how many pennies will he have earned in five minutes? Three fifths per minute times five minutes plus two, 15 over five, three. He gets five cents, he's a billionaire. He earns three more cents in five minutes. Three cents per, not three fifths per one minute, though that's still true. Three cents per every five minutes, right? We can look at it that way too. Okay? Um,
just have to.